the Anachronauts. They travel through time by downloading history to their brains and archive the past in order to save the future. With their trusty brain download computer the Epic Traverseer, they randomly visit the past year after year. Join them as they embark on their next adventure. Prepare yourself for Anachronology. <laughs>
these roles are the most incredible. I had to ask the server, I'm like, these roles are like the greatest roles. And they were just like, yeah, it's we get them right from the bakery right next door. Bet your ass next day went to the bakery on the way home, walked in there, smacked in the face with just all the smells and everything. Roles were unbelievable. And again, just like you talk about a trademark, a good bakery stands a league above a fucking like a chump you know uh there was a uh, there was an italian bakery in our hometown it it folded when uh, oh, yeah. shit, dude, I, think, I think we were still in high school but bro i can remember my mom it was like an italian place so i remember my mom going there to get like cheese and some like deli or whatever and dude they had this like peasant loaf like the the disc motherfucker that's got that cr- thick ass amazing dude i would kill to have another loaf i know of that. i know sell it right now well, you're not gonna but, get it at the acme bread company Acme bread company and maybe then, you uh, would i don't know Berkeley, California, if you guys are still kicking, I'd like to come and smell your rolls, but maybe later. Mm. Well, the next business here in 1983, gimme Jimmy's cookies. <laughs> gimme Jimmy's cookies. <laughs> gimme Jimmy cookies was founded in 1983 in West Orange, New Jersey, United States by Jimmy Libman. Born deaf, Whoa. Libman overcame his disability to run the cookie company by himself for more than 20 years to supplement his work. Mr. Libman hired other deaf workers, offering them a place to hone their skills and showing everyone that being deaf is not a limitation on success. I mean, uh, sure. That's a unique, uh, a unique message that no, that, that they can't hear. Okay. I just want to reread this. Yeah. I don't know if I lost something here. Libman overcame his disability to run the cookie company by himself for more than 20 years to supplement his work. Mr. Libman hired other. So are you mean to say that he made all of these cookies and shipped them all for 20 years? And then it wasn't until 20 years down the line where he finally caved. But instead of hiring non or, you know, like any people he could, he was like only the deaf. Oh, this is going to be a yeah. deaf only, which I, you know, I'm all for, you know, given the, yeah, uh, absolutely. You know, but dude, I just think that's like a that's some serious like, hustle for 20 years and your daff. I mean, you must have had a system down. Yeah. It worked, but and I and I can't yeah. imagine like, I mean, is there are there and then it says like to hone their skills. Are there that many deaf people wanting to make cookies in 1983? Was that like the the, the fucking the 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 uh, boom of having deaf deaf bakery workers that couldn't get their foot in the door because they know a new sign language in the kitchen, but then here's Jimmy with his cookies. Give me Jimmy's cookies. Uh, I've never had a give me Jimmy's cookies. I, I've either. never had one either, but uh, yeah, it sounds like a staple. And hey, New Jersey, you know, yeah, yeah, right. wise guys up there. Let me see. Give me uh, still in business. Let's see. Is Jimmy, give me Jimmy. Um, what do we got here? Give me, give me cookies. Um, number of employees. There is 20. Em- dude, there is only 20 employees here amazing uh they're all still the same deaf and you can apparently you can buy them online you can in in 2014 jimmy moved online and it's uh so it moved to new jersey for i'm sorry moved to new york to facilitate faster shipping um but dude since 2014 give me jimmy's cookies has been hey anybody years. over at give me jimmy's cookies we know you're not listening to this <laughs> you're watching it we want some free stuff Come on, we'll make sure that the uh, closed That's captioning the works. Dog. Come on, Listen, we will proofread the closed captionings just so you guys know that we we're will. talking about some Gimme Jimmy's cookies. Well, yeah, if any of you guys are right. uh, listening out there in uh, Anachronology Land and you want to try some uh, Jimmy's cookies, they are still in business and they only have twenty employees. It may take a second, but they'll get them to you. So give me those dark uh, Next up, the Vermont Teddy Bear Company. Oh my VTB God. is that like publicly traded on the Nasdaq? Uh, VTB is one of the largest producers of teddy bears and the largest seller of teddy bears by mail order and internet. I'd imagine the company handcrafts each of its teddy bears and produces almost five hundred thousand teddy bears each year, half a million bears per year. The Damn. company was formally traded on the Nasdaq. Well, there you go. That makes sense. Uh, Nasdaq Stock Exchange under the ticker symbol Bear B E A R, but was taken uh, private by the Mustang Group, a Boston-based private equity firm, on September 30th, 2005, partially to avoid reporting required. Okay, I don't know what this means. Um, uh, partially to avoid the reporting requirements of the Sarbanes 
Oxley Act. So that has to be something dealing with trading stocks, uh, which I am way out of my fucking pay grade. But that's pretty wild. <laughs> they, they, they were like <laughs> running afoul of the Federal Trade Commission where they needed to get bailed out by Jeez, fucking uh, right the, the Mustang group. They need to bring in the big guns of the Mustang group to fucking take the heat off the Vermont teddy bear company. I know that this company still exists today because it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's just a thing. And then they've wrapped themselves into just like teddy bears being like the new bouquet or get well card or ra have wrapped it into Valentine's Day. They've just wrapped teddy bears into every there's a teddy bear for every occasion. I mean, I even want to say back in the day uh, when Clay and I worked on commercials in Orlando, we worked on a couple of her okay. teddy oh, bear yeah. commercial spots and they were uh very particular very about their particular and interesting but yeah they are a big company and a brand and uh people love bears god yeah i think i remember oh god did, did we have like wasn't the talent like obviously the, the moms and the kids aren't really related but they had to like play like that. i feel like that was one of the commercials they were doing some build a bear workshop or something uh missed opportunity here in this still image of outside the vermont i'm guessing this is like the vermont teddy bear headquarters or something why aren't there bears they're they're, they're pumpkins why aren't there some bears out front for this shot this seems like a missed opportunity like if this is some sort of like promotional shot which i don't know if it is but i mean you're outside the vermont teddy bear co we got one two three four five like seven pumpkins not one bear come on missed opportunity it is very strange. Yeah, there's the Vermont, uh, a couple, of, a couple of small pumpkins. But uh, I wonder if they uh, have giant factories in Vermont. Probably employ a lot of people up there. <laughs> Are they all deaf? <laughs> um, <laughs> for, for the yuck of it. Now I'm curious. All mute. Let's, let's see what uh, they can hear. They just can't speak. Uh, let's see. What is the? Okay, so it looks like you get different sized ones and different um, like makes of fur. Jesus Christ, there's a six foot giant one. So it looks like it starts at like 30 bucks and then it kind of goes up to like over $200. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what kind of partner you have that you feel you have to buy them a $200 yeah, uh, six teddy foot bear. Teddy bear. Yeah. Sorry. Here you go. That. I mean, even 30 bucks on a teddy bear seems a little steep. I think, on that's there, like, honey. Yeah. I think that's like a starter model too before you start putting on like sparkles and whatnot in it. But the Vermont teddy bear, hey, if uh, you want to get your it's significant cheap. other something that reminds you of them and they're uh they don't like to drink and they don't like to go party give them a vermont teddy bear maybe that'll be a nice something they can wake up to in the morning uh the walt disney picture company is an american film production company and subsidiary of walt disney studios uh owned by the walt disney company obviously the studio is the flagship producer of live action hmm. feature films with the walt disney studios unit it is based at walt disney studios in burbank california Oh, Disney sure. began producing live action films in the 1950s, but uh, be when it became Walt Disney Pictures in 1983, when Disney reorganized its entire studio division, which included the separation from the feature animation division and the subsequent creation of Touchstone Pictures. Uh, ba -ba -ba. And then at the end, by the end of 1980, Walt Disney Pictures elevated Disney to one of Hollywood's major film studios. Absolutely. And those and if anything, we sure as hell know this is still around freaking in 2024. Yeah, it just bought up all the other giant IPs and yeah. all the other giant uh, studios and television networks. The, I mean, there is literally, Jeez. there is freaking Disney Plus, I believe, is aside from the, Disney Plus is basically Disney is Studios Animation and Disney Pictures just put put right in your face in t digital tablet form. Yeah, uh, that, and then every like again, every big temple IP they buy, yeah. they have all those, they have all those networks and things. It's just crazy, man. It's wild how how you're right. Back back in this time, they had to distinguish. This is for the a film division, and then here's our animated division. You know and yeah, then Touchstone, all these other kind. Yeah, Walt Disney Pictures. Well, I wonder how many of Give Me Jimmy's cookies did they fucking order at Walt Disney Pictures? You guys don't care about deaf people, you bastards. Uh, Jerry Bruckheimer Films also sticking here with uh, movies. So Jerry Bruckheimer uh, Films was uh, incorporated in 1983. I'm just going to run down a list of here, some of the, the hits here. Uh, starting in 1983, Flashdance, Beverly Hills Cop, Damn. Top Gun, Beverly Hills Cop 2. Uh, man, they liked him. <laughs> we're going right back to more Tom Cruise. Days of Thunder. 
Oh yeah, loved dude, it. Rem- dude, do you remember the ref with uh uh Dennis Leary I and then remember Manning? that dude? The ref, Bad Boys One, Crimson Tide, Dangerous Minds, The Rock, uh, and that's up to like 1996. And then I think I just kind of stopped it here because then it gets a little uh crappier more in the movie selection but for the first like so it's so an 83 to 96 you got flash dance beverly hills cop top gun Beverly Hills up to days of thunder the ref bad boys crimson tide dangerous minds i mean it's they're not all oscar winners but there's some good i mean freaking there's some classics in there i mean beverly yeah hills, jerry Bruckheimer was a fucking player man absolutely and then obviously then in the late 80s early 90s he got michael bay off the ground in his career mm-hmm. and just he still f- fucking shit up today and that uh that's the logo the lightning striking the tree logo oh, classic right who doesn't love that uh let's see here what is next in 1983 for businesses the stairmaster oh, man look at these wow. people they're ready to climb some fucking stairs founded by lanny lanny i believe l a n n y founded by lanny potts jim walker and george shup and landed by and launched. I'm sorry, launched by TriTech Incorporated of Tulsa, Oklahoma, in 1983 at the National Sporting Goods Association trade show. The first piece of equipment, Stairmaster 5000, was a rotating staircase yeah. machine. Was replaced with the Stairmaster 6000. Mechan- mechanically, the Stairmaster 6000 was virtually identical to its predecessor, but the 6000 displayed workout information on a digital screen. Oh man, game changer! And it, yeah, and I mean, even to this day, that model, or I mean, sure, it's God knows what fucking model it is today, but these things are still parked in gyms everywhere. It's like it is a very particular exercise, and just the emulation of literally walking fucking stairs like any other normal person, but. What a genius idea. Dude, this thing looks like too. This looks like a, hey, a prop, right? It looks it looks like it's made for a movie. This yeah. doesn't look like it it's like a real, real like mass produced uh, workout <laughs> machine. That thing is that's a chunky boy too. It's got like a like behind her like there's a lever coming out over the right hand side. You see like what the hell is that thing doing? Like is there a gear shift in it? I think that's the I think that's like a break. An like emergency stop, stop it, like to stop <laughs> it from moving and shit. I've been on like one or two of the of, of the stairmasters just randomly in a gym, and they are weird and yeah, and I mean just people are just they're on them, you know, for that burn, baby. Yeah, the only uh I don't know if I've ever been on like a I don't know if I've ever been on like a what is this one, two, three, four? Yeah, okay. So this has got like four steps. I mean, obviously you're just like standing in place as the thing rotates. I think I've been on like the mini version of this where that's definitely not this hall, this tie. Because this thing is like it's high. Uh, let's say this let's say this thing, this guy is like, you know, five eight, five, nine, five, ten, whatever. Let's give him like a little manlet action. That thing is still well above his head. Yeah, that is a seven, that is eight a in the air. Yeah, that's a piece of machinery. Fall off that shit. Yeah, yeah, that's why you need that e break. Uh, what's next on the list here? Ah, Sam's Club. Sam's West Incorporated doing business as Sam's Club, American chain of membership only warehouse club retail store owned and operated by Walmart, founded in 83, named after the Walmart founder Sam Walton as Sam's Wholesale Club. As of at least January 31st, 2019, Sam's Club ranks second in sales volume among warehouse clubs with $84.3 billion in sales. That is in a fiscal year. That is $84.3 billion in sales. Oh, man. And that model obviously is in that in the Costco racket, BJ's. It's funny. And it's like this. It's that illusion of all these places make everything's bigger. You're getting a savings, you know. It's like it's a it it's it's always funny. Even to this day, we'll go, my wife and I go to Costco's and I just laugh because I'm just like, it's such a racket, you know. And I think you and I have talked about it. Like, there's things that are worth getting. Like, there mm. in 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 bulk, you can get a better deal in some areas. But some shit is just like it's so smoke and mirrors in there. I'm just, dude, I am blown away by the number. 84.3 yeah. billion. That is so yeah. much fucking shit to be bought at a damn Sam's Club, dude. That's that is crazy. insane amount of, like, yeah. I mean, is, are people just melting credit cards, going in debt to buy 40 pounds of mayonnaise at a clip? Because, dude, that is, that seems like a lot of Yeah, money. and they, That's a lot of them, a lot of them are like, I think, uh, 
I think they'll do cash, but then a lot of them just were for a while where just you had to use certain like credit or debit card. Mm. That was a thing for a long time. And then um, even at the Costco's, they would do shit where you'd be, they'd be like, only this kind of credit card, like Visa mm. MasterCard. Like you would be screwed if you had an Amex. So yeah, probably because all these yeah. little side side door deals, I'm sure they make with creditors and credit card companies. But yeah, of course, that's America, man. People will go into debt for the big tub of mayonnaise and like a pack of Gatorades. Yeah, the uh, the one that's it's abysmal when we have to go over to like where the wholesale <laughs> places, the, the clips we have to go. The people who uh, buy gas and obviously, you know, it's like cheaper oh, gas, man. dude, that dude, that is like a circle of hell trying crazy. to wait in yeah. line. Dude, there is one when it I have to go crazy. Um, sometimes when I got to go up to uh, like a different end of town where there is I don't know if it's a, oops I don't know if it's a Sam's Club or uh, a Costco or something but dude it is every time uh, I'm like driving on this road you see this it's there's a you know a, a red light for to turn into wherever the wholesale club is dude it is just like oh a my half a mile in 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 a not a turn lane in like a lane where you should be able to drive oh, yeah, straight yeah. And it's just people waiting to get gas dude and it's every time i'm up over on that side of town it yeah. is insane bro if you build it they will come yeah they will come there. and buy gas no shit uh what do we got here cedar fair company okay so cedar fair entertainment company or simply cedar fair an american company headquartered its flagship cedar point amusement park in sandusky ohio united states was a publicly traded master limited partner that originally formed in 83 uh ba, 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 ba. by 2006 the company's portfolio had grown to 11 amusement parks 11 outdoor water parks and one indoor water park in the u.s and canada uh the acquisition of schlitterbahn i have been to a schlitterbahn in texas um cedar ferry and a longtime rival six flags merged this just mm. happened this year merged in july 1st 2024 forming the new company and retaining the six flags mm. name uh ma, 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 former cedar fair the company headquarters will reside in charlotte north carolina a site once occupied by paramount parks and Expedition cedar fair 2006 the company will continue to use the sandusky office location and financial and military operations so if you guys like roller coasters you like uh amusement parks uh cedar fair is arguably one of the best companies to do it in the world and this is actually uh the one in ohio like the flagship one cedar point I see your point, dude. I that is one place where I am. Uh, are you down there? It's my dog down there. Well, once if you guys can see this, this guy, he's a, he's a big pain in the ass, and unfortunately, I uh, I probably won't be able to take a vacation until he kicks the bucket. I don't watch it too, buddy. But that is, I've said to uh, I've said to my uh, my girl, I said when when we are able to travel, when we are sans a couple dogs, uh, that is like the first place uh, I think I want to go. Because, dude, I for all the things I do not like doing i will brave uh like parking and walking through crowds to go on some badass roller coasters and i think this place has like the one in ohio has like a dozen i think or something yeah like it's that. one of the biggest tallest in yeah. the world right uh there's definitely a couple where uh they used to hold some records but yeah there is it's it's just it's supposed to be like the best roller coaster park uh in in the world given the amount that they have and the like launch coaster or this type of coaster Rad. coaster but that is one place where i am looking forward to taking a vacation to when i can get the time away uh what do we got here for the next one uh at&t american wow. multinational telecommunications oh there is a lot of fucking info another here. monster fucking company yeah we are not reading all of this i'll tell you that right now what are the hits we got any fucking hits in here the uh, oh we got a nice little antitrust lawsuit in 1982 united states versus at&t antitrust lawsuit resulted in the uh, divestiture of at&t's uh, Ma Bell local operating subsidiaries, which were grouped into seven regional Bell operating companies, commonly referred to as the Baby Bells, resulting in seven independent companies, including Southwestern Bell, uh, later changed SP. So, okay, so basically, ATT had a monopoly on fucking any, any phone company yeah. and they had to get busted down. So that's why ATT was formed, I guess, because there was a monopoly on phone service in the United States. All the Bells. Yeah, it began as the American District Telegraph formed in St. Louis in 1878. So all it took was uh, until 1982 to freaking to, to get everybody to get on board with you can't be the only game in town. That's yeah, crazy. I remember seeing AT and T get bigger and bigger uh, throughout the years too, and then eat. And I remember um even back when um they made the jump into the cell phone game 
because I remember oh. they, they took over Singular. They bought that that company Singular and merged, and then obviously took the AT and T name because I had worked at Singular for like a month before AT and T took it over, and then it like watching it it kind of inseminate and take over and like the rebranding and everything. It was like, yep, this is it. There weren't going to be many more small cell phone companies after that. The uh, this this logo is very uh, like iconic too, like this oh, yeah. uh, like the globe or the sphere with a little uh, the negative um, the relief in it. That is very iconic. I can see that from like even back in the eighties version of this. I don't even know if they've updated this. Oh, the yeah, the text it, the right. text has been updated, but I think the sphere I think has just been slightly maybe shushed up a little bit, but. They still love that AT and T sphere. Oh, the BK Knights, oh, baby! Wow. Look at British, those British Knights. British Knights is an American brand founded in 1983 by Jack Schwartz Shoes, uh, based in New York City. In the 1980s, British Knights distinguished themselves as an inner city and music driven brand, appealing to the predominantly male youth in urban communities. <laughs> Let me see what a freaking night! Now we got to pull up eBay here. What's a 1983 British Knight shoe worth, man? What do we got? Look at those things, man. Oh, give me a shopping. Give me a shopping. <laughs> um, no vintage? Give me vintage. Let me just, I just want to get a price point. Give me a vintage British. God, the design on them are just so kind of tacky, too. Um, well, okay, BK, so three, BK. 300 bucks, 300 bucks for a vintage, oh, wow. it looks like. Um, they only have one listing. Uh, British Knight shoes, maybe uh 300 bucks hmm. 150 bucks for vintage looks like everyone is oh, 400 bucks okay yeah so uh anyone who's got their old school bks uh you either wore them to shit or you're not parting with them because you're, that is not. that's a pricey that's a pricey uh heirloom right there a bk uh these, these think, were some stonewashed jeans oh man uh i believe i owned one pair <clears throat> in my youth of some BKs. really i yeah, I, I think I had the BKs, and I, I think, remember. I uh, I feel like the ones that I had some some sort of like uh, like the side of it had some weird like ribbing or something like it was some design, and uh, I thought it was so cool until like fell apart. Like it oh, was, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was, uh, and then I think my mom said, "I'm never buying these again." Like, what happened to your shoes? I'm like, oh, they're they're BKs. I don't know, but I think I think I had one pair. Uh, looks like we are coming up on second to last lens crafters. The lens craft, the original lens crafters, nineteen eighty three. Oh, yeah. oh no, not bumper. So nineteen eighty three. Um, uh, so Tom, last time I saw you, we were talking about uh, vision. You got the X ray specs. I am lamenting uh when my eyes have to go to <laughs> when i have to go to the uh the eye doctor and probably Sad these, day, my friend it's these totally yeah it's definitely one of those things where uh i didn't think i needed them and then i was like oh wow i probably should have gotten them a while ago but um yeah they and then it's like all of these places like i've i don't think i've gone to a lens crafters and i think lens crafters is like the um it's like the mall of yeah. like getting all the different frames you want. Cause if you go to any kind of like eye doctor, they have a fucking place right in there that sells you all the shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's yeah. like, you could be like, great. Tell me what my, my script is. And then I'll go to something like a lens crafters. And I guess the shitty part is probably your insurance is limiting you on the kinds of frames. They'll allow you to buy. They'll give you this much for that. But, designer frames are everywhere like i mean yeah. you can spend a shit ton of money on frames or glasses and uh then be, these being located in malls lords know there are very few malls left around so uh I, I wonder if this is like one of the last holdouts of like Maybe. failing malls is just fucking just tumbleweeds <laughs> rolling through you gotta keep lens crafters <laughs> yeah <before>. right <laughs> just just yeah just just some Please. some poor Master. <laughs> yeah, like solo, <laughs> solo running the lens crafter store. Uh, and I think I get a little, get a little away. The last one here, bumpers, bumpers driving. Bumpers Drive-In of America, more commonly referred to as Bumpers, <laughs> is a regional fast food restaurant chain located in Mississippi and Tennessee. Mostly operates in small towns. You don't say. Bumpers Drive-In was founded in 83, Brookhaven, <laughs> Mississippi. Um, during the 1970s, uh, this guy, the guy who founded it, owned a Sonic franchise. And it favored uh, fast food fa chains fa at that time favored procedures that sacrificed quality in the name of variety and efficiency. 
so I guess wanted to serve her high, higher quality fresh fast food. Sethi, the guy's name, opened his first <laughs> bumper store in Brookhaven. Uh, bumpers is not a name that is screaming quality and fast food. Uh, bumpers food. screams like uh, strip mall. Like, oh no! Did you freeze? You froze. No. All right, we're back. Can you see you're me? You're back. Yeah, right. hey, you're back. Hey, you're back. I was gonna say. All right, Bumper screams uh, strip mall gentlemen's club rather than <laughs> anything else. It doesn't say this is a fun drive-in movie theater. Gentlemen, welcome to Bumpers, where you can hit a show and a meal. Let's look at what we have in the bumpers. All right, so oh, we've got. Wow. <clears throat> okay, it's like it's whirlies. I like shakes and whirlies. Okay, so there is a blues bag with two bumper burgers. There's a biggie bag, a bigger, beefier bag. What do we got for sides here? Onion rings. I love me some onion rings. <laughs> chili. Oh, they got tachos. They got chili cheese fries yeah, or tots. Tachos. Fried pickles. A chili pie. Uh, well, monster fried fries. Ups, jumping jack fries. I have no idea the hell that is. Uh, mozzarella sticks. Funnel cake. Jalapeno pops. Ah, uh, your premium sides aren't too bad. Um, hot fudge cake, strawberry shortcake, pineapple shortcake, hot apple pie. Yeah, so it's just like standard stuff. There's nothing that's like super like this is the only thing like, you got to go to bumpers and get you know the bumper burger it's or whatever the hell it basically is. Basically, like a gross concession. Yeah, stuff. it's 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 Tennessee or <laughs> it's Tennessee or Mississippi fucking gas station food. Basically, yeah. Like I said, like maybe uh you could do a little bump at bumpers and, yeah. and have a good time i'm not sure about the food man i don't know funnel cake fries bumpers i don't know but why are your funnel cake fries up in desserts I our figure fresh kitchen has crafted up this <laughs> decadent this rogues gallery of premium size well i know the next time i travel up uh, through mississippi <laughs> i am looking for the nearest bumpers to get me a whirly and a bigger beefier bag Jesus Christ. <laughs> Make sure oh, to give well, you the full review. Um, well, that was uh, businesses, the newest category nice. here on 1983's nice. on chronology, which you means only, cats, baby. Which only means one thing. We have one more option or one more little 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 fun to have on the show. And that is the final segment. And this is a repeat oh. offender here. I don't I think the last time we did this, Tom, was the First or second episode? I can't remember if it's first or second episode, but this is one we call oh, Crushing yeah. Hard. Crushing so Hard. The, the premise of Crushing Hard is uh, we take uh, from the year of the episode 1983. So we usually take a uh, couple females and uh, not necessarily compare or contrast, but kind of have uh, two, at least uh, in Tom and my case, two ladies that uh, might be similar, but we might have to, uh, you know, pick one or the other, a little Sophie's Choice type action, but uh, not necessarily like uh, one is better or worse, just, you know, boyhood crush you know what i mean you look at this you say i i don't know why but they, they give me the butterflies in the stomach 83 so re crushing yeah 83 heart. very true 83 crushing hearts so uh the first one up we've got movie mom crush we got beverly d'angelo from uh Na national national lampoon's vacation or we have terry gar from mm -hmm. mr mom so this is movie mom crush beverly d'angelo from uh, lampoon or terry gar from uh mr mom it's a tough choice man because i mean i want to say i mean terry gar is really hot she's oh, definitely yeah. very attractive she's just got she's got something about her um i will say that as a young boy uh discovering and watching i remember my parents had like a vhs of recorded Lampard. vhs tape of shitty tape of vacation and i remember i mean i think beverly d'angelo definitely gets naked oh, yeah. in vacation so mucho points at that titties all out uh my young mind going wild very crushing hard on that i wouldn't i gotta go with beverly d i i'm going with beverly d as well uh Tom, I believe that the, the the scene in question, uh, which is in the shower, um, I believe Chevy Chase says to her, um, honey, can I do your back? And she says, I've already done my back. And he says, can I do your front? That is a great line. Yeah, to, uh, yeah. That's a great line. I've yeah, already done absolutely. my back. Absolutely. Can yeah. I do your front? Yeah. But uh, well, honorable mention to Terry Gar, who is. Oh, yeah. Great. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, kind, time has not been kind to Terry Gar as of late. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna. So I'm gonna Sorry, throw Terry that. Yeah, yeah, but hey, yo, and Mr. Mom though, you are. Hey, look, you still got a private plane too, or whatever the hell is going Fox. on. Like, Total yeah, Fox. I mean, 
Well, <laughs> I mean, you you definitely it's not for lack of a uh, trying, Terry Gar. You were definitely a hottie back then. But we, me and my boy went. Uh, and then uh, Beverly season. D'Angelo is like basically, uh, I mean, if she had her like her Al Pacino phase, and right. now I don't, I don't even know what Beverly D'Angelo does anymore. Just oh, God, yeah, shows yeah. up to like cons and screenings of Christmas Vacation. Yeah, I think she played some sort of like grizzled oh, female that. CEO in something relatively recently, but yeah, that tracks. Uh, Regardless, let's do a little working girl crush. We got Jennifer Beale in Flashdance oh, versus Rebecca De Mornay in Risky oh, Business. I they, know, dude. Oh, another, know. another know. super head to head. Um, this is hard, man. I, I okay, know. I gotta say too, these are really pulling from the the crush and hard archives of eighty yeah. of the young eighties for me. Um, I remember my mom had the Flashdance vinyl, right? So, and it's that cover. Mm -hmm. She looking looking fine, yeah. obviously in that like that that little oh, the shoulder, shirt, just so uh, toned up. Legs are great. Uh, just dancing, and then I remember like it'd be like the Sunday afternoon movie or some shit on mm -hmm. Channel Eleven. Definitely caught me some flesh dance. Yeah, I'm probably gonna go with her just because that's a that's a good time memory. Oh yeah, she is uh, super hot. Uh, you know, I am gonna go Rebecca De Mornay only because I remember seeing Risky Business and she gets mm. very naked in Risky Business. Yeah, she does. And, uh, I, I remember seeing that as very a hot. young boy, and that uh, definitely uh, messing with the uh, chemicals in my brain. So, and by but Jessica Veal, you are you you just this close, and it's only because she gets so much more naked in, in her movie. But you are a ten. Don't don't get me wrong. Um, <laughs> Next up, we have <laughs> we have the nice Jewish girl crush. We have Phoebe Cates um, from a private school, and I did I confirmed she is of Russian Jewish uh, heritage. Wow. Wow. So we have Phoebe Cates. I feel like this one might be a no brainer, my friend, because or we have that, or we got Barbara Streisand and Yentl. <laughs> so Phoebe Cates, a funny girl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but it was in 1983. Yentl was night. We got to go with the year. We got to go with the year. What, what, what is this? Barbara Streisand hit. That's Yentl. Oh, Yentl. Yentl. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, you know, like if this weren't like uh, crushing hard '83, maybe we even took it back to the mid to late '70s. I think Babs would maybe be. Oh, yeah. she she'd wasn't probably bad. be. You no, know, absolutely. And I remember being young and like watching younger Barbara Streisand movies. Like she's in the one with like Robert Redford funny girl oh, yeah. oh, like yeah. she's scary like she's just, you know she's attractive you know they, oh, yeah. she's she's a good looking woman but um dude phoebe cates man yeah, she's phoebe just cates. the darling of that yeah. time my god and then uh, obviously you stick around uh richmond high which was what 80 uh is that 82 might have been a year before yeah, yeah it might have been, 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 like been an earlier drop yeah fast times but yeah look at her just she's just yeah. an angel come on come on and then uh, I, I didn't realize that, of course, he was smart. Locked that down. She's married to Kevin Klein, the actor. Phoebe Cates. Yeah, yeah he locked you, it. You, you, you got to lock that down. down. You got to lock that down. Yeah, but you know, Kevin Klein. I will yeah. forgive Wild Wild West. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got Phoebe Cates. Yeah, you that's win. yeah. Yeah, man. So yeah, he goes to show like funny guys, man. Funny guys can pull uh hop rods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, he's like he's not a bad looking guy, but he's no fucking you know Brad Pitt. But he's yeah. funny. He is funny. He's Phoebe Cates uh, funny. Yeah, uh, what do we got next here? We got Sporty Girl Crush. Sporty Girl Crush. We got Chris Everett Tennis. Chris Everett Tennis. Okay. Or we, we got Flojo Track and Field. Chris Damn. Everett. Maybe Flojo Track and Field. Yo, dog. Yeah. I mean, I got to say, some tennis hotties definitely, you know, they're there. I, I see you, tennis hotties. I got to say, I don't, I think tennis was a different look, a different oh, feel. Yeah. It's definitely very Andre Agassi haircut thing going on there. Yeah, a little long, rough. I thought like, like the baggy. tennis mullet. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. But but Flojo, I mean, just primed up like oh, yeah. fucking a, a literal racehorse. Yeah, dude, she was fine, fine, fine. Yeah. She had all the style. Dude, yeah. Dude, yeah, yeah, yeah. Flojo, I mean, she is, and uh, yeah. I still believe, I still think she still holds uh, the world record for the fastest woman's one hundred yeah. meter. I believe so, all the way back in eighty something. I can't remember when she did it. So. Uh, yeah, she is world champion of not only the Olympics, but also our hearts, Flojo. Flojo, uh, you take it. And then we got here, we got a Scary Movie Crush. We got Scary Movie Crush. So this is, mm -hmm. a, I didn't know this chick's name, but I've seen this movie a bunch. Uh, Alec, I couldn't remember her name, I should say. Alextra Paul is her name. And it's from the movie Christine, the Stephen King, Christine. Absolutely. 
and then um, uh, Debbie Harry from Video Drone. Oh. Yeah, so we have uh, Electra Paul from Christine or Debbie Harry from Video Drone. Debbie Harry looking like a bad bitch over there. Oh, I'm taking, dude, I'm taking Debbie Harry. I fight, dude. I, I think I told you last time I saw you. I was, uh, I was listening to, I was driving around. I was listening to NPR. They were talking about Debbie Harry. I went down a little uh, Blondie Debbie Harry, dude. Fucking Blondie's awesome. Debbie Harry's awesome. Yeah, Freedom is crazy. Yeah, Video uh, Drum is crazy. She's crazy. She's perfect in it, and yeah. she's obviously really hot in it. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm gonna be. I'm, I'm with you on that. Sorry, Alexstra. Yeah, you are also. I remember crushing up very hard on you, though. Very hard on you, Electra. She was uh, in a lot. I think she was in a couple more slasher films too. Um, and it looks like the last one. And this one, Tom. So this one's this one is the first time ever. Also on a crushing hard. This is not only a one v one. This is a a one v one v one v one. So we have four to choose from. And this is bringing it back from the start of the episode. So. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your Sally Ride crush? Do you got curly Sally Ride? Do you got straight Sally Ride? Do you got action Sally Ride? Do you got zero gravity <laughs> Sally Ride? Which Sally Ride are you taking for a ride, brother? Wow. You <laughs> There's so many options. Oh, so many Sally Rides I can take. I know. <laughs> yeah, the OG. I do dig the real Americanness of that one on the far left and, and the curly classic. I yeah, mean, this dude. is, I mean, she's all American woman, brother. All American, smart as a whip, freaking action star. I like the, I like the, you know, I, I gotta say, I kind of like the straightened out, rocking the helmet, kind of like I, she got the fucking, like, whatever that flight suit is on. I also like that one. But, you know, I think I'm gonna go action. I'm gonna go action, action Sally Ride. I think I'm gonna go action Sally Ride. I think she looks a like little a more... videographer or something in that picture. Yeah, yeah. I feel... I'm, I'm I'm building the story in my head that like uh, she knows like because she's an astronaut and like smarter right. than me like you know we're on some adventure and she like uh, she saved me we end up we end up you know uh, through our through our differences but we end up we end up together at the end of the adventure so yeah I'm gonna go action Sally ride yeah I'm gonna stick with that second picture yeah, yeah. I don't know, I don't, know if we're, I don't know if we're gonna go like ride like the the zero gravity test machine and like puke and then make out <laughs> under the moon. And then canoodle. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking that's a hot night for me and straight haired short Bob Sally ride. Oh man, well there are no wrong answers Amazing. in Crushing Hard because the heart wants what it wants, but that was 1983's <laughs> Crushing Hard. I hope you guys enjoyed playing along at home. Yeah, Tom, I yeah. hope you enjoyed playing along because I know we haven't had that one in a minute and it is a fun one. Oh man, 1983. Wow. Where have been all my life, I've been living in it. Brother, Damn right. You were born episode. that year, and we got to find out more about it. All the things, all the categories, the year in <laughs> review, the, the segments, littles. the littles. You get it all, folks. This is what you get here on Anachronology. Multiple Thank you for rides. watching. Uh, we do this all the time as much as we can. We jump year to year, all the random categories and the fun and hijinks ensue. Stay tuned because we have one more episode left here in season two. Uh, and of course, the, the usual follow us on all the socials, on the Instagrams, on the TikToks, on, I think there's something on Facebook. I definitely know there's YouTube and oh, yeah. the ever so fun, ever so random Patreon. $5 oh, yeah. a month. Get you all the fun, extra bonus stuff thrown at you. Folks, we love you. Thanks for watching. And we'll be back next week, next time, someplace new. Hey, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you. Later. Bye.